Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to look at switches. Uh, this comes from a question on Patreon where somebody asked about uh, intermediate switches. Here's uh, a certain item, just looks uh, normal on the front, and on the back seat it has four terminals. And this is not a double pole switch, this is a single pole switch and specifically used for lighting. So we're going to have a look at that one and also the other two types of switch as well, and a quick overview of how these things actually work. And we're actually going to take these apart too to see what's inside and see how these are actually being made. So here we've got uh, three switches, and these are used uh, for lighting. They're only rated uh, 10 amps uh, in most cases, although some old ones could be 5. Um, have a look on the back here, this is the intermediate with four terminals. This one is uh, just a one-way switch with the two terminals. And then this particular one, well it's slightly different moulding, it's the same deal on the back. This is what's called a two-way switch with three terminals. Now before certain people rush to the comments section and complain bitterly that uh, they're not called that. Of course in other countries these may well have different names, but in the UK that's what they're called, so one-way, two-way and intermediate. If other countries want to call them four-way and twenty-way and who knows what, well that's entirely up to them. But uh, that's what they're called here, and uh, we're going to take these apart, but before we do that just have a quick look at how these things are actually wired. Now in the simplest possible circuit we're going to have the uh, line coming in like that, and of course we're also going to have a neutral connection such as this, and then we're going to have some kind of lamp, and we'll just draw this here as uh, some old type uh, filament variety, and then of course the wires will come out of the bottom like that. And in most circuits, certainly in the UK, it's only a single pole switching, so the neutral is not switched, that's actually permanently connected to the lamp at all times. And the line is the one that is switched, and essentially all we're doing is putting a break in that wire, and then the switch is actually in here with the movable contact. So this part here is actually the switch. So all that's going to happen then is in the open position here, or off position, this course is not going to light up because there's no path for the current to flow, but so when you turn the switch on it's basically just going to connect across here completing the circuit, so then the power will flow there and the light will turn on. And it's important to note that the two wires that go to the switch are both line. There's no neutral here at all because remember the neutral is connected over here at the lamp, and typically this will be on the ceiling in the room, this will be on the wall somewhere near the door. So we're going to take a switch off the wall, two wires inside are line and switch line, so you could put sort of line and then uh, switched line. They are definitely not line and neutral. If they were line and neutral that would mean you're going to basically be connecting between here and there, and of course if you connect line and neutral together then of course there's a huge explosion and the world comes to an end. So clearly not line and neutral, it's just line and switched line. So the basic switch then, which is essentially just this one that we have here, two terminals which are just those two terminals there. In the off position they're not connected, and in the on position those are just simply connected together so the current can flow through to the lamp. Now the other kind of switch which we've got here, which is this one, this has an extra terminal, so it's got the uh, two we had before, so basically no connection or there is a connection. This has a third terminal here, and the way this one is done inside is you've got the terminal there, two terminals like that, and then the contact, rather than just being open and closed, actually moves between this position here, in one position of the switch, and then when you move the switch to the other position, this metal piece basically moves over to that position there. So in the case of connecting this, again it's going to be line coming in, and you could have two lines coming out there. So depending on the position of the switch, the current could either go in this direction here, or it could go in this direction there. So it's one or the other of those two. And that's basically what we've got here, so that's the sort of common terminal at the top there is marked L in the case of this one. And then we have two outputs here which on the case of this one are marked L1 and L2. But it doesn't really matter what they're actually marked, it doesn't uh, actually affect the operation, it's purely the fact that we've got uh, one sort of input here and that can go to one or other of the outputs, and certainly not both at the same time. And the third type of switch here which is the intermediate, this has four terminals, and uh, what's inside basically is essentially two of these. So on one side we have the two terminals like that, and then the uh, other two over on the other side like that. And in one position 
then this pair is connected together, and then this pair here is also connected together. And in terms of wiring for this, you would have typically two wires coming in here, both of which are lines, of course, again, no neutrals here, and you would have two of those coming out like that. So again, lines coming out as well. So in this position, you've got two separate wires there, which are connected through like that. And in the other position, when you move the single switch on the front to its opposite position, what happens is that instead of these being connected straight through, they actually end up being connected like this. This one connects over here, and then this one connects over here, and they do not connect up in the middle, that's just basically yeah, crossing over. And again, you'd have your same four wires coming in the sides like that. So essentially it's taking these two wires on this side, and then flipping them over, and then putting them the other way around. So uh, it's either straight through or basically they're just crossing over as they go through the switch. So just a quick uh, doing on this uh, plastic board here. So this is the one-way switch with just the two terminals. So this is in the off position. When you move the contact, or the button rather, it will just simply connect those together. So then you've got a complete circuit and the light turns on. And of course, when you move it back again, breaks the circuit, so of course the light turns off. And again, it's line here and line here. Neutral is only connected to the lamp, typically it's far away from the switch. And two-way switch, which is on with the three terminals in, it's basically like that or like that. Again, it's only a sound of button on the front. This is usually where you've got two switches for the single light. Again, it's no neutral there, it's just a line on both sides. In this position, the light doesn't turn on because there's no continuous path for the current, but if we say move this one to here, then you've now got that continuous path, goes all the way through, and of course the light will turn on. And you can turn it off here, but you can also turn it off by simply moving the switch here into this position, because again there's no continuous path, you've basically broken it at this end. And again you can just move, say, this end here to there, because again now you've reconnected it via the other wire. So basically just using one or the other of these to complete the circuit, each switch can do it independently. And for the intermediate, with the four terminals like that, in one position there it's just straight through. So in this position the light is still on because we've still got the uh, path going all the way through. And again we can still turn it off with the two end switches. But we can also turn it off using the new switch in the middle, because if we just change it to the other position, then it will connect across like that. And again, there's no connection in the middle, it's just that they overlap within the mechanism of the switch. So again, we've broken the circuit because that comes through here and up to here, and of course it doesn't get anywhere. But we could just easily say move this one again to uh, recomplete the circuit. So now we've got through here, up there, and through onto that one. And again, if we move that one, it's going to break the circuit. And if we put this back to how it was before, which is straight through, and again we've broken the circuit once again. So all three can operate the light independently. It doesn't matter what combination they're in, it works whichever one you've got. And that's before we can add as many of those in there as you want. Now what we've got here is just the one-way switch, so just two terminals. And these are actually labelled common on uh, this one here, and this says one-way at the bottom. And it doesn't actually matter which way around these are connected, of course, because all it's doing, say, is just joining them together or not. Also note this one actually has two-way there, but there's no actual terminal in it. But of course they use the same plastic moulding for both types, so just cheaper to make that way. So uh, let's just take this apart, and all we should find is something that connects the two pieces together. Now I've chosen these particular switches because they do have easy opening screws on the back, so this would be quite straightforward to get into. Of course you wouldn't normally be uh, taking these apart because they're the kind of thing that, once it is apart, it's probably not going to go back together particularly well. So let's take those away. And on the front here it is just a single press switch like that. So just remove the uh, back from that. So just got the black plastic moulding here and uh, just where the various terminals are fitted in there. And then inside we can see the two terminals here where you would obviously connect the uh, circuit wiring. And all we've got inside, this is just a black, uh, basically a filler. Obviously say it's used for the uh, other style of switch as well. And then inside on the back of the uh, switch there, just a little spring and this moving contact here. Just take that out of there. So this is the piece which actually moves, so it just basically pivot around the uh, thing in the middle there. 
this is right, going terminal survey. So this side is going to be permanently connected to the incoming terminal there, if you want to call it that, or the one that was marked as a common. And then all that's going to happen when you press the switch is that the contacts here will either be connected together or not. And in the case of this one, it's just going to be a question of that either pressing down onto that one, or of course not as the switch tilts in each direction. Now this black piece here is essentially a replacement for the third terminal, which uh, obviously we'll see in the other switch uh, in a moment. So connected together there, and then this one would be coming over the top or underneath, so it's going to connect to that one or the one there. So basically it's just these two being connected together through the middle, or of course not. So that's the most uh, straightforward kind of switch. And uh, now we'll just move on to this one, which uh, has the three terminals. Now, this is actually a uh, different make, but uh, we'll expect it to be, of course, pretty much the same inside. And so this one is actually marked somewhat differently. We've got line or L there, and then L1 and L2, of course, at the bottom. Now, if you wanted to use one of these as just the one-way switch, then you can just use the L here and this one here and just ignore that terminal because that's basically what we've had in the other switch, it's just that was a piece of plastic in the other one, because that may have saved like two pence or something on the cost of manufacture. And it's quite often the case that if you buy switches, particularly with multiple switches on a single plate, that they will all be of this type because this is far more commonly used, certainly in things like stairways and whatever, where you're going to want the additional switching option. So you can just use this one and uh, one of these terminals here, of course it doesn't really make any difference, the only penalty really is that these of course are slightly more expensive, but again you're talking say just a few pence in most cases. So screws are gone and it will just open this one the other way up so uh, you might be able to uh, keep it together a bit more than the other one did. So this is what we had inside. So there's the button on the top there and we can see the two terminals underneath. And there's the other one, just a little spring and a little peg there. So this is the sort of common or incoming terminal here. Remove that uh, piece of plastic there. So the back of the switch is literally just a little piece of plastic to uh, secure in and basically a spring to provide the sort of clicking action that you would want. So we've been pretty much the same as the other one. We've got the common coming in here, apparently connected to that piece in the centre. And then depending on the position of that uh, little bit of plastic, it will either connect down to this terminal, which it's in the position of at the moment, or when that's pressed down at the back, it will flip up and make contact with the piece here above. So you see there's quite a decent gap between the two there. So it's either going to go at the bottom through to that one or uh, peer it upwards to make contact on the top. So if we press there then you can see it will just peer it up to make contact with the top one. And of course when you move it back it just drops down to the one at the back. Now this is the intermediate one. And again, this has the uh, four terminals, and it should be essentially two of these contained inside. So basically it's one in that way, and then the other one is sort of overlaid from the other side in a fairly complex pattern. So let's take this one uh, apart as well. Now intermediate switches are fairly uncommon, but uh, if you do actually get one, you can use them as both a two-way switch or even just a single uh, one-way switch as well just by, of course, only using some of the terminals. So if you've got some particularly uh, complex arrangement where you say you need an intermediate or one switch and they need sort of a two-way or a one-way as well, then it's just usually as easy just to buy sort of two or three intermediates on the same plate, because then, of course, you can use the intermediate for its purpose, and then any others you can just use, say, some of the terminals for your other circuits. It's very unusual, I think, to find any kind of intermediate switch paired with something else, unless you've got one you can literally change the various modules independently. So, as before, we'll just turn this up this way, so hopefully the middle doesn't go flying out. And again, we've got our little lever in the centre. And in the case of this one, it's got two of these sprung pins here. These are actually stayed in the thing there, but so they're just, as with the other, just a plastic peg with a spring behind it to provide a bit of force there. And then here is of course the actual mechanism, so very similar to what we had before, again it's just two of those uh, previous sort of mechanisms, so terminals here to go straight through to that pivot plate in the centre, and then at the bottom here we've got the uh, actual mechanism which actually moves. So in its current position 
you can see that this uh, and this terminal here basically goes straight through to the corresponding terminals opposite because the plate there is down at the bottom. So that's our sort of straight through arrangement. And then when you press the switch to the other position, which would press here, that will lift up the uh, contact plate there, like that. And of course this one would also occur at the same time. So then this one will go through and across, and then this one here will also go through and then across to the other one there. And note that there's a significant clearance between the two, so at no time are the two sides here ever connected together. It is purely, literally, one straight through or one crossing over. And again, the same on the other side. So that would be in the crossed over position. And then when it goes back, of course, it goes to the straight through position. Now, if you wanted to use this just, say, as a normal one-way switch, just with the two terminals, then you just use, say, this terminal and this terminal, because in that position they're connected, and then, of course, in that position they are not. So you're basically just ignoring these over here, and it's either just straight through or basically no connection whatsoever. And if you wanted to use it as a two-way switch, then you just ignore, say, the top terminal here, and then uh, that's just popped out of there. All you would then get is simply the straight through and then, of course, this goes over to that one, and then you just wouldn't connect this terminal at all. So it can be used for both. And as you saw there, this one, the two-way, can also be used as a one-way, just simply by ignoring, again, one of the terminals at the bottom. Or on the other one, it's actually there, but it's just basically a lump of plastic instead of the threaded item. So look there at light switches. Three types, the one-way, just with the two terminals on and off. Two-way, which can be used for switching lights from two locations. And then, of course, the intermediate there, which has the four terminals and will be used if you want to switch things from three or more locations. And you can use these, say, for the two and one way as well if you need to. And you can also use the two way for the one way if you want to as well. So, quite a bit of flexibility involved there. And the final point with these is that if you want to buy an intermediate switch, do make sure that it is actually an intermediate switch and it is labelled as such because don't just assume that it is because of the four terminals, because you can also get things like this. This is not an intermediate switch, it's actually a double pole switch, although it has the uh, very similar configuration on the back. The difference with this is that this is actually two entirely separate switches in the back, and being double pole it's basically line and neutral in at the top and line and neutral out at the bottom, so basically it's the equivalent of two of the one-way switches moulded into the same block. These are normally used for things like immersion heaters or storage heaters or things like that, so not normally for lighting, but of course, uh, just looking at it in the shop there, they do look fairly similar on the back. So that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.